You know, there's a scripture that they used to read in church in those days. When two are in the field, one will be taken and the other will be left behind. And we used it to justify the fact that rapture would have occurred. But the truth of that scripture is that Jesus was not speaking about rapture there. He was speaking about the signs of his second coming. And in that matter, he was not talking about rapture. Okay, so I wanted to do it last week, but let's look at it so that you will believe what I'm saying. Matthew 24, let's begin at 29. Let's go back to 29. Uh, 29 is foul. Uh, give me 36. Uh huh. But of the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. What day is he talking about? Eh? The day of his second coming. And part of the things that will happen during the second coming is that believers will be caught up in the air to meet with him. Is that true? Those are part of the things that will happen. So, from Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1, what have we been talking about since verse 1? Okay, let's go back to verse 1. Some people were not here. Go back to verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to him, came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? As shortly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3. Now as he sat, sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And what? Of the end of the age. So everything that Jesus is teaching about in Matthew 24 is about what? The sign of his coming and of the end of the age. Do you agree with that? Everything. Everything to the last verse. In fact, when you finish Matthew 24, he now begins to give parables to further explain what it is he's talking about. So after Matthew 24, you have the parable of what? The ten virgins. Speaking about the end of the age and the coming of the bridegroom. Are we together? So go back to 36. So have that at the back of your mind, 36. But of that day, what day now? The, his coming and the end of the age. Are we together? No man knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be what? The coming of the Son of Man. Now, he's trying to use an event that the people are familiar with to describe what will happen during when he's coming so if you are going to understand what he's saying then you must understand what happened during the days of noah is that true yes, so he explains a little further 38 for as in the days before the flood now the flood now becomes the implication of his second coming because the flood came as judgment when he is coming he will also be coming to judge the earth are you with me? They were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Are you here? What was he saying? Men were, were living in pleasure. Men were not conscious that the age was going to end and judgment is coming. They were not conscious. They were eating, they were drinking, and everything. They did not believe that the things that Noah had said was actually going to come to pass. So they continued with their life as if it was normal. Until the day Noah entered the ark and the rain began to fall. Are you here? Next verse, 39. And did not know until the flood came and did what? Somebody said took. He says, and the, they did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will, be the, com this will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what is he saying? 
Just as the flood came and took them away, when the Son of Man comes, there will also be a taking away. Do you agree? If you don't agree, they can give you a mic. It's Bible study. We're just reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible together now. Look at it again. And did not know until the flood came and did what? So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. It means that just as they did not know, they were just doing their things, and then some people were taken away. Hmm? So also when the Son of Man comes, people will be doing their things, and some people will be what? Now the question is, how were the people taken away? What does the Bible mean when it says, and took them all away? What does it mean? Who were taken away? Don't, it's, not, it's not jump. Eh? Don't be looking, as if, looking at me as if it's engineering mathematics. It's Bible. Eh? And you know the answer. He says, the flood came and took them all away. I'm asking you, brothers and sisters. Who, is, who said that? Good man. They took them away. It means that they died. Next verse. Verse 40. Then, two men will be in the field. One will be what? When you read that, because you have pre-tribulation rapture in your mind, taking in your heart means that they will be caught up. But that's not what the Bible is saying. Are you here? Yes, we are just reading the Bible in context. You see, one thing that will save you when you study scriptures is always remember that the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. It's a single thought. This thing that Jesus was doing here, he was not saying chapter 1, verse 3. He was just talking. Go back to the previous verse. The flood came and took them all away. And our brother has helped us. Those ones that were taken away, what happened to them? They died. Next verse. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken. And the other will be left. Remember that the metaphor is using here. Or the allegory. I don't know. My wife will help us. Whether it's metaphor or allegory now. Just choose one in your mind. Any one you choose is correct. <laughs> Remember that what he's using here as the basis for this teaching is the days of who? And in those days, the ones who were taken did what? The ones who were left, what happened to them? They were saved. So when he says one shall be taken, he's not talking about being caught up into the air. He's talking about those who suffer judgment. Yes. That's what this place is about. Say so two shall be in the field. One shall be taken. One shall be left. Okay, let me show you another scripture. Matthew 25, give me 36. Matthew 25, give me 36. Stay, stay. Don't worry, it's Bible study. I was naked and included. Is it where I'm looking for? Give me 37. Uh, 38. 39. 40, 40, 40. There's no 40. 41. Where is this scripture? 42. Is there 42? Oh. I'm looking for this scripture. Is it not 25 or is it 26? Give me 26, 36. Where the Bible says he separates his goat and his sheep. Is that not 25? I'm coming on. 25 what? 25, 33? Let me see. Aha! I know 25. Okay, let's go to 31. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. Forgive me. Are you getting blessed? Yes. Good. 
Matthew 25 and verse 31. When the Son of Man does what? Oh, Marabo Kobash. I'm waiting for this day when he comes in his glory. I look forward to it with all my heart. He says, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. 32. All the nations will be gathered before him, and then he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from 33. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats he will put on his left. What you are reading about eh, in Matthew 24 is a separation between them that serve him and them that serve him not. It's not about being caught up in the air. And I'm just reading it in context. The same word that he use, uses when he says they were taken, some were taken and swept away. He says that one will be taken and another will be left. Those who will be taken, those are the ones that are being separated as goats. Those are the ones that are candidates of judgment. That is not a sign that you will not be here during the tribulation. That is just a sign that the Son of Man has come and in his coming, he has begun to separate between them that serve him and them that serve him. That's what that scripture is about. Now, if you don't put these things in your heart according to how God wants it to be put in your heart, you'll be living in a, in a paradise that does not exist. All my life, I believed it. In fact, we joke about it. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't see your wife by your side, <gasps> So a rapture don't take place. Or God has not how it's going to happen. The Bible says that the sign of the Son of Man will be in the heavens. All the world will see him. All. Then the dead in Christ will rise first. You see, I don't attempt to explain things that I do not fully understand. Can I give you a full description of how it will happen that we will now be living the ground like this? Because somebody might be thinking now, how is it going to happen? Are we going to float? Are angels going to carry us? Are wings going to come out from our back? Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not going to pretend and attempt to explain something I don't understand. But what I know is that would have, first of all, our faith would have been tested like gold through the fire. By that time, the man of lawlessness would have been standing in the holy place. By that time, he would have reached an agreement with the leaders of the world for, a, for peace. By that time, he would have begun to work signs and wonders. And even the very elect, some would have been deceived. By that time, there would have been a law that if you do not take his mark, you cannot buy, you cannot sell, you cannot leave. You cannot do anything. By that time, they will now begin to look for those who name the name of the Lord, who have determined that they will serve him till they die. By that time, those people would have become endangered species. They'll be looking for you everywhere. The Bible says that you will jump into a river. The river will vomit you. And you see, the funny thing about that thing is, some will be put to death. Hmm? But it is the first death. Some will be tortured. The Bible says that men will cry for death. And death will not come. That kind of torture where they put your hand like this. And they give you short sleeve. Or long sleeve. And while you are in pain, they are asking you, renounce Jesus. You see, I'm trying to be very graphic because I was listening to Brother Fergal leading prayers. Hmm? And one of the prayers he prayed struck my heart. He said, Lord, help my heart. Help me to accept your will. 
at some point you could see the cry that was coming from his soul. I know it is hard, but help me accept your will. Right now, just simple lack, you cannot maintain your integrity. Let them say that you cannot eat, you cannot buy, you cannot sell, except you deny Jesus. Are you sure you'll be able to survive? 